Hey Rayleigh and anybody else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. Today we are looking at Isaiah. So Isaiah's chapter, Isaiah chapter 1 through 4 is going to have us looking at the state of Israel. So the state of Israel is not good. So we're going to take a look at their fallenness. We're going to take a look at impending judgment. And then we're going to look as well at what God will do for his people uh, if they seek him. So again, calling them to repent, uh, so just as we should be. Isaiah 1 through 4 is going to cover all of that. So we'll start with chapter 1. The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amaz, saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his master, the donkey, his owner's ma manger, but Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Ah, sinful nation, a people loaded with guilt, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They have forsaken the Lord. They have spurned the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on him. Why should you be beaten any more? Why did you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured, your whole heart afflicted. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness, only wounds and welts and open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed with oil. Your country is desolate, your cities burned with fire. Your fields are stripped by foreigners right before you, laid waste as when overthrown by strangers. The daughter of Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard, like a hut in a field of melons, like a city under siege. Unless the Lord Almighty has left some survivors, we would have become like Sodom. We would have been like Gomorrah. Hear the words of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the law of, God, of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings, of rams and the fattened of animals, and the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moon, Sabbaths, and convocations, I cannot bear your evil assemblies. Your new moon festivals and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Listen to do right. Seek justice. Encourage the oppressed. Defend the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. See how the faithful city has become the harlot. She was once full of justice. Righteousness used to dwell in her, but now murderers. Your silver has become dross. Your choice wine is diluted with water. Your rulers are rebels, companions of thieves. They all love bribes and chase after gifts. They do not defend the cause of the fatherless. The widow's case does not come before them. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord Almighty, the Mighty One of Israel declares, Ah, I will get relief from my foes. I will avenge myself on my enemies. I will turn my hand against you. I will thoroughly purge away your dross and remove all your impurities. I will restore your judges as in the days of old, your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you will be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion will be redeemed with justice, her penitent ones with righteousness. But rebels and sinners will both be broken, and those who forsake the Lord will perish. You will be ashamed because of the sacred oaks in which you have delighted. You will be disgraced because of the gardens that you have chosen. You will be like an oak with fading leaves, like a garden without water. The mighty man will become tinder and his work a spark. Both will burn together with no one to quench the fire. Chapter 2 This is what Isaiah, son of Amaz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and all the nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. 
the law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. You have abandoned your people, the house of Jacob. They are full of superstitions from the east. They practice divinations like the Philistines and clasp their hands with pagans. Their land is full of silver and gold. There is no end to their treasures. Their land is full of horses. There is no end to their chariots. Their land is full of idols. They bow down to the work of their hands, to what their fingers have made, so that man will be brought low and mankind humbled. Do not forgive them. Go into the rocks, hide in the ground from the dread of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty. The eyes of the arrogant man will be humbled and the pride of men brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. The Lord Almighty has a day in store for all of the proud and lofty, for all that is exalted, and they will be humbled. For all the cedars of Lebanon, tall and lofty, and all the oaks of Bashan, for all the towering mountains and all the high hills, for every lofty tower and for every fortified wall, for every trading ship and every stately vessel, the arrogance of men will be brought low and the pride of men humbled. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day and the idols will totally disappear. Men will flee to caves in the rocks and holes in the ground from dread of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty when he rises to shake the earth. In that day, Men will throw away to the rodents and bats their idols of silver and of gold, which they have made to worship. They will flee to the caverns in the rocks and to the overhanging crags from dread of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty when he rises to shake the earth. Stop trusting in man who has put but a breath in nostrils. Of what account is he? Chapter 3. See now, the Lord, the Lord Almighty, is about to take from Jerusalem and Judah both supply and support, all supplies of food and supplies of water, the hero and the warrior, the judge and the prophet, the soothsayer and the elder, the captain of the fifty and man of rank, the counselor, skilled craftsman and clever enchanter. I will make boys of their, I will make boys their officials. Mere children will govern them. People will oppress each other, man against man, neighbor against neighbor. The young will rise up against the old, the base against the honorable. A man will seize one of his brothers at his father's home and say, You have a cloak, you be our leader, and take charge of this heap of ruins. But in that day he will cry out, I have no remedy. I have no food or clothing for my house. Do not make me the leader of the people. Jerusalem staggers. Judah is falling. Their words and deeds are against the Lord, defying his glorious presence. The look on their faces testifies against them. They parade their sin like Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to them. They have brought disaster upon themselves. Tell the righteous it will be well with them, for they will enjoy the fruit of their deeds. Woe to the wicked. Disaster is upon them. They will be paid back for what their hands have done. Youths oppress my people. Women ruler rule over them. O oh, my people, your guides lead you astray. They turn you from the path. The Lord takes his place in court. He rises to judge the people. The Lord enters into judgment against the elders and the leaders of his people. It is you who have ruined my vineyard. The plunder from the poor is in your houses. What do you mean by crushing my people and grinding the faces of the poor? Declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. The Lord says, the women of Zion are haughty, walking with outstretched necks, flirting with their eyes, tripping along with mincing steps, with ornaments jingling on their ankles. Therefore, the Lord will bring sores on the heads of the women of Zion. The Lord will make their scalps bald. In that day, the Lord will snatch away their finery, the bangles and the headbands, the crescent necklaces, the earrings and the bracelets and the veils, the headdresses and ankle chains, the sashes, the perfume bottles and charms, the signet rings and nose rings, the fine robes and the capes and cloaks, the purses, the mirrors, the linen garments and the tiaras and shawls. Instead of fragrance, there will be a stench. Instead of a sash, a rope. Instead of well-dressed hair, baldness. Instead of fine, fine clothing, sackcloth. Instead of beauty, branding, your men will fall by the sword. Your warriors in battle. The gates of Zion will lament and mourn. Destitute, she will sit on the ground. Chapter 4. In that day, seven women will take hold of one man and say, We will eat our own food and provide our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name. Take away our disgrace. In that day... The branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land will be the pride and glory of the survivors in Israel. Those who are left in Zion will remain in Jerusalem, will be called holy, 
all who are recorded among the living in Jerusalem. The Lord will wash away the filth of the women in Zion. He will cleanse the bloodstains from Jerusalem by a spirit of judgment and a spirit of fire. Then the Lord will create over all Mount Zion and over all those who assemble a cloud of smoke by day and a glow of flaming fire by night. Over all the glory will be a canopy. It will be a shelter and a shade from the heat of the day and a refuge and a hiding place from the storm and the rain. So just as God's people continue to continue to drift away from God, that's the same as it is today, really. We see so many people professing to, oh yeah, I believe in God, or oh yeah, I'm a Christian, but what, what fruit is produced? You'll know them by their fruit. And if people are continuing on in their wicked ways and trying to slap a Christianity label on it, Again, that is not something that God wants. God wants obedience. And that is something that is difficult. It's a narrow path. But just as Isaiah told the Israelites and God told the people through Isaiah, humility will always be so, so important. Humble yourself before the Lord because we need repentance just as much today as we did then. Anyway, Rayleigh, my prayer for you is that you have a humble heart and know that I am praying it for you. For anyone else that's joining, know as always that I appreciate you so much and I'll plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.